Praise be Jesus and Mary. In today's first reading and in the gospel, we heard of two different profanations of God's temple. Well, more specifically, in the first reading, we heard about the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem after the profanation committed by Antiochus Epiphanes in Maccabees, uh, the first book. And then in the gospel, we hear of Jesus cleansing the temple of those who were profaning it by selling sacrifices at an exorbitant amount. Jesus said, quote, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer. Luke 19, verse 46. However, through unlawful and sacrilegious practices, God's houses of prayer can and at times do become defiled. Even in our day, there are what we might call dangerous houses of prayer, particularly I have in mind any house of prayer uh, where any, or any place where a priest who does not have faculties to celebrate Mass is, in fact, celebrating the Holy Mass. That's a dangerous house of prayer. For example, the chapels where the Society of St. Pius X, where their priests celebrate Mass, fall under that category. And why is that? Well, because the, the SSPX, as they're known, is not in communion with the Pope. They're not in communion with Rome. The word schism comes from the Greek word schisma, and it means a split or a division. It can also mean to tear or to rend. Catechism at number 20, 2089, and also canon law number canon 751, defines schism as the refusal of submission to the Roman pontiff or the refusal of communion with the members of the church subject to him. So de facto, the SSPX are schismatics. And I know that both Cardinal Burke and Cardinal Mueller in recent years have openly stated that the SSPX are in schism. Practically speaking, what does that mean? Well, it means that the SSPX priests do not have the faculties to celebrate Mass. So every time they do celebrate Mass, their celebration is what's called valid but illicit. Since the celebration is illicit, meaning not permitted, not lawful, that means that the celebrating priest is committing mortal sin every time, every Mass he celebrates. And he's also receiving Holy Communion sacrilegiously. So if you think about that, every time someone watches one of those priests celebrate Mass, they're actually witnessing a priest commit mortal sin. They're actually witnessing a profanation in what's supposed to be a house of prayer to God. Now, I doubt that any of us would willingly participate uh, in watching a priest commit any other type of mortal sin, uh, and yet people are willing to do that, uh, precisely that, when they participate in these Masses. It's actually quite sad if you think about it. Uh, and since schism implies division, and it's the devil that divides the faithful amongst themselves, uh, you can be sure that the devil is at work in such communities and with such priests. Personally, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if there even was demonic activity in some of these chapels or some of these houses of prayers. If I had children, I would keep them as far away from possible as possible from such places uh, because the spiritual environment that they foster is not from God. Any priest who knows he has to submit to the Pope but refuses to do so is dangerous with a capital D, as we would say. As far as the Archdiocese of Indianapolis goes, which is where we are here, the Archdiocesan newspaper, The Criterion, in July of 2013 actually published an article stating that it wasn't permitted, it's not permitted for Catholics to attend SSPX masses or liturgies. It said only if a Catholic is, was legitimately impeded from participating in a mass celebrated by a priest in good standing in the church, only in that instance would it be listed for Catholics to participate at an SSPX Mass. In all other cases, such participation was considered illicit, meaning not lawful. That was the policy under the former Archbishop Tobin. I've recently written to our present Archbishop, Charles Thompson. I've asked him to see if that policy is still in place. I wrote that letter just the beginning of this week. 
For those of you who are watching uh, via YouTube, I'll post his response when I receive it, and I'll let you know what he says uh, as far as his response goes. Of course, there are extremes on the other end as well, on the liberal end as well, and unfortunately, uh, as Newton said, uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's his law of physics. Uh, it even applies in these cases too. So the modernist extreme and their profanations provoke the traditionalist extremes and, and their profanations, and probably vice versa as well, because extremes provoke extremes. And extremists give birth to other extremists. That's the sad fact. But as Aristotle taught, virtue is in the middle between the extremes, and it's virtue that we need to be aiming at. A traditionalist extreme can be more alluring, and it can be more deceptive, especially for people who are more devout. But it needs to be rejected, just as the modern ex extremes need to be rejected, because both of them finish in the same place, which is in sin. Both of them finish in sin. I'll just close by saying that being a faithful Catholic means that we walk by faith, not by faith in our own understanding, not by faith in our own interpretations, but by faith in God and faith in His Church. Those who trust in their own understanding ultimately don't trust in God. Even the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5, says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, Lean not on your own understanding. So let's be wise in the choices that we make. Praise be Jesus and Mary.